Morning, Matt. Good morning. How are you? Good. Yourself? Uh, I'm well. Check out something here. Afternoon, Boris. Oh, sorry, was on mute. Not after. <clears throat> they just started and <laughs> already started mute every so. Okay. Hey, good morning. How are you? Good, good. Thank you, Matt. I think we'll leave another couple of minutes. This might be a really small meeting. You know, we're at meeting. This is technically meeting zero. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, but I consider it's very important because for me it's a big deal to properly observe, properly observe Kubernetes. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Um, I'm sure we'll get more folks as the weeks go on, but yeah, this one might be a little thin on the ground. I didn't have a chance to invite a few more guys who are actually quite involved in Kubernetes. Okay. I don't know how I missed that before, but I like your collection of CNCF plushes up there, Matt. Yeah, I got them in, in LA. Uh, they were kind of cute. Um, and they came in like a pack. And if you stayed until the last day when they were breaking everything down, like everything was on fire sale. Oh, so, wow. Kind of like... <laughs> I got a cool bag too. Check it out. Oh, nice. Yeah. Pro tip go to conferences and stay until everybody else starts to leave and they break everything down. And then, <laughs> and then go buy stuff. Supply and demand. pinged in slack as well to see if anyone's happens to be there because i don't know if some people have potentially forgotten that it was this time uh it's okay i mean a lot of what we have to do i think um we don't need necessarily a crowd for like it's it's pretty well what, once we get into it uh, i've taken a first whack but um yes i saw the agenda items which i appreciate thank you but I, it's not much of an agenda um yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be too prescriptive. Um, but I think, well, yeah, we, I, I guess whenever we did start it, we should start it. Really, uh, it's up to you if you're if you're slacking people. I'm just filling out some issues as well. Um, we we can start it, like start a recording at like five past. Uh, that should be enough time, I think, for most people. Oh yeah, the the recording is um has been going from the beginning, and oh, I'll, 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 I'll chop it and edit it later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll get going at five past. Yeah, like whenever you like the actual video will will start when you open the meeting <laughs> through the power of Adobe. <laughs> <laughs> Shazam, <laughs> magic. What, what I really want to get from today is, um, and I think we're, we're pretty much there now, is sort of critical mass to send a missive to the TOC ahead of next week's meeting, kind of laying out what we want to do, kind of, you know, formally requests, you know, 
it's a little bit of hard stuff. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? we're already doing what we're doing, but um, yeah. you know, rather than saying, "Hey, we want to go make a thing," where we, "Hey, we want to make a thing." Here's our project board. We started. Here are the things we need, and like fan out because we have a new TOC chair as well. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we may as well get started. Uh, so, welcome everyone. Today, uh, I'd like to open the first Observe K8 working group meeting uh, as part of the CNCF tag observability. I um, appreciate you taking the time today. Um, we don't have a huge turnout, but uh, we should try and get uh, things rolling. Uh, do you want me to share my screen, Matt, with the Oh, however, however you like. Um, I, 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 I'm going to put a link to the HackMD notes that were also in the invite. Um, I'm, I'm kind of think we should try this out. I've used it in other contexts, and it's nice because it's like a Google Doc, but it's Markdown. So when we go to post these notes to the repo and have a record, whoever poor sod is stuck transcribing won't have to won't have to write. Uh, you know, have to translate everything to markdown yeah no that's perfect. you get the markdown view uh i don't know this is the default view i'm in is there not a tab off to the left uh ah there we go yeah and then the split one is the in the middle there is the low okay okay cool so oh michael's here Hey, uh, thanks for the reminder, Ken. I had it in my calendar an hour later for whatever reasons. Um, uh, that's probably the lovely European time zone that changed that happened on the weekend. Oh, right. That was right. Uh, yeah. And I, and I probably didn't realize thing. that until after the fact that things were probably going to be a bit skew for Europe right, right. because of that. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Good. Uh, OK. Um, so uh, let's start off with some intros. Um, uh, so myself, uh, Ken Fingen, uh, joined Workday six months ago, been doing, I guess, observabil observability related, related things for maybe two, two and a half years now. Uh, initially at Red Hat on Quarkus doing uh, integration with open telemetry and things like that. Uh, but now at Workday kind of covering everything across metrics, logs and various other things in between. Uh, I'm really excited by this and the thought of being able to help explain observability because I know when I first started looking at it, it's such a huge area. It's very easy to get lost in terms of, well, what do I actually need to start and where do I start? So for me, that's kind of where I see this fitting in. Uh, who wants to go next? Boris? Hey guys, um, I'm Boris Abdelovich. Um, I'm actually a uh, part of, uh, and um, I'm doing observability for numerous number of years. And um, uh, as a recent move, we're all involved in uh, to bring a good observability uh, uh, approach for Kubernetes environment. And this has become extremely important for me and for my team to understand what is the future, how you're going to approach and do this work. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Boris. Oh, okay. Matt? Hey, my name is Matt. Um, uh, I have been uh, an, an observability aficionado for a while, um, and I'm one of the co-chairs for Tag Observability, um, and I'm excited to see what we can do here. Um, I think we have a real opportunity to build out a curated case study compendium of clonable things. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, I think we, you know, we, I've had a bunch of side conversations with folks who are interested in contributing once we sort of get a nucleus and a critical mass going, which I'm excited to see that we're kind of on track to do. Uh, we said Q2, Q3 was when we kind of get serious. Uh, and here we are. Uh, so. Uh, Q2, I think, starts tomorrow, technically. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I'm that well. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Michael? All right. My name is Michael. I'm a solution engineering lead in the AWS Open Source Observability Service team. So we do things like manage Prometheus, manage Grafana, um, the AWS distribution for open telemetry. And yeah, I've been active in this 
open source observability area for quite a while now. And before that, mostly with containers, first good old Mesos and then uh, code latest the last couple of years. Cool. Thanks, Michael. Uh, okay, uh, with the intros out the way, uh, let's get on to having a look at the existing issues. And I will just copy that. Whoa, okay. Uh, I am new to the brand new GitHub project view, which looks kind of like Trello. Uh, so, <laughs> what all these are are a quick brainstorm. Um, and they're drafts. Like if you click on one, they're not actual issues, they're baby issues, and they're all one liners. So, what I thought okay. we could kind of do is breadth first, just kind of like enumerate the ones that I just kind of spit out, but I didn't want to go hog wild and make a whole project plan in solo. Just wanted to kind of seed the pot a little bit. And I thought we might brainstorm a little bit collaboratively, kind of like no wrong answers. Um, we could either do it in the Hack MD thing or in GitHub if you don't. Want to deal with if, if you're brave rather um and um sorry about that uh, and just like kind of just uh you know i'll go in parallel for a couple of minutes and just see if we can get like an initial like you know 80 percent coverage on sort of like what are the tasks we would want to do in the coming month um you know in the, in the next in the next couple of sprints uh, because sort of the, the first thing to do is kind of define what, what we're going to do for next steps. You know, I think I hear Michael in my head um, saying bias for action, right? Um, so uh, uh, that, that's kind of the intent here. And if we if we leave this kind of first, first official meeting um, with at least sort of a semi-vetted, you know, rational, no gaping, huge holes um, in place, then, you know, we can kind of put things together and categorize them and tag them and, and I or we can write up a summary so that, you know, uh, when we actually do uh, this week, as I said, uh, right before you join Michael ahead of the, the TLC meeting next week, um, you know, we can have sort of a summarized view of like what this looks like and identify opportunities uh, for folks to contribute. So uh, that okay. would be a win for me. But, but as part of maybe before we get into it, as part of like intros, maybe we could kind of hear what the other three who aren't me <laughs> would like to uh, uh, get. Uh, see happen by the end of our, our time here today on uh, sour sure uh boris do you have any thoughts of what you'd like to get out of today um it's a more practical approach um we can split this uh in general when you do uh, some observability for kubernetes it's a uh, two task one is uh um, in kubernetes itself where we would like to know what's going on with kubernetes in general health uh, performance etc and second is a big um question how we're going to uh, use uh, observability for application and users that are using this environment mostly it's a, sometimes it's a huge shared environment and we have to define something like new uh, uh charge control address that will give us ability to see impact that have been done by every application and user on Kubernetes environment. So in other words, uh, from my perspective, this is a two big uh, fields. One is how we're going to, in general, to monitor a Kubernetes, and second, how we uh, can set up some um, standards, how we're going through monitoring of a user or application activity on Kubernetes side. Uh, maybe it would include some metadata that must to be include on every uh, deployment address uh, that would help us to do the second uh, relations between different deployments, parts, everything else. So again, two tasks. One is KS itself, and second application that sit on this platform. Yeah, I think both of those are definitely covered by the, the charter. I think I think here today we're talking more like task focused about like what are actual things that people can can do now uh, that would kind of move things, move things along. But, uh, but I, I think I, I I think what you, what you said makes sense. Like those are the two uh, big buckets. So I'm, I don't know. Should we go through kind of what I've got? Uh, there's a mixture of like low hanging fruit that anyone could do on purpose. That is not super specific, but it's just administrative that needs to happen. Uh, and then there's some other larger chunks of design and, and architecture work 
um, you know, all of these need to be flushed out and whatnot. But again, uh, if we should, 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 do you want me to just kind of like walk, walk, talk through these briefly? Uh, sure. Yeah, you can walk through what you've put in here, and then we can see if there's uh, other main ones that we think we should add, and maybe split. Yeah, uh, and and you know, I think you know we could get some categories like standard agile stuff for t-shirt sizing and things like that. But again, uh, this is kind of like a smattering of, of low hanging and bigger things. But um, on the packaging side, uh, npm pip crew, technically Maven, and a couple other places have a global namespace. Uh, so if we in the future want to have like, you know, pip install of drip cakes or MP, you know, if we, if we end up having some collateral that we want to share in a consistent way or a crew coop kittle plugin, um, we might want to just grab those. <laughs> um, okay. So this is reserving like the observed K8's name in these. Uh, right. So we don't have like, you know, water yeah. grab the NPM package and, and things like that. Um, I okay. thought about RPM and Deb as well, but I don't know. I don't know that that gets a little more serious than like NPM. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know what that whole world is, so I, I left that out on purpose. Um, I just took the workloads from our doc, and there's just an issue card for each of them. Um, over the last week, a uh, uh, gentleman, uh, Ramon from Timescale, reached out. Um, you know, they're they're interested in contributing some of the test collateral they have. Uh, uh, it's the team that does PromScale, which is Prometheus on top of Timescale, which is on top of uh, Postgres. Um, so, so those are kind of just some initial workloads. Um, we need an actual design, like a look and feel design by a designer in the community. <laughs> I am not one uh, for, you know, we have two domain names that we've gotten an IO site and a dev site, um, you know, dev focused on engineer types that want to either contribute or, you know, use the stuff and the IO site being a little more broadly accessible and explanatory, a little more splashy. Um, uh, there's some number 13 is like a note to me. I need once we, you know, once this is officially approved and we actually launch it eventually, we need to transfer the domain names to the CNCF. Um, this one came from Ryan at Pyroscope. Um, you know, we really need to codify a definition for what it means to be a workload that can run in this um, framework, this, 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 this catalog, if you will, of, of running clonable things. Um, really to just nail down like what it means and what it isn't um you know we've already had you know one one offer of a, of a workload I, I recall uh that's tied into a particular vendor's cloud service right so you know we have some core requirements like this needs to be cloud native right it can't be tied into one specific um product service api so yeah uh, so so that that needs to be cleaned up um i think we should write some help wanted descriptions <laughs> you know basically job descriptions uh, that we can post on jobs on the jobs board at CNCF um, as sort of like unpaid, you know, thing, but also um, that we can communicate to the TOC and to our advisors uh, for the tag, um, uh, you know, hey, here are some roles that we need, you know, we're going to need everything from creatives and designers that can make graphics and logos and uh, a compelling experience to people to build it, uh, project managers, unless it's us running all the project management, um, you know, end users and our cluster operators like you know just we do need a, a a couple of a couple of key uh roles filled so we need to do those out um i've got two tasks for wireframes uh for the initial user experience and then wireframes for what happens after like hey welcome come see our other workloads you know and like what does that look like um and i think starting with design is a good thing rather than just kind of you know we can, we can put we, we can stub something out you know but i really do think we should intentionally have a human-centered and focused design. Um, number 18 is, is a big one that's going to require a bunch of collab, but you know, what does it actually look like? Um, our core our core architecture and what are requirements around that? Um, I've got some like it should be able to run on my laptop or on a, or on a cloud somewhere, right? Um, you know, just some some basics. Um, 19 is self-explanatory. You know, we get trademarks for the Adrift Gates thing uh, with the CNCF. Um, I had a conversation in Slack with Chris at the at the CNCF, um, and he pointed me out like the process to get CNCF infrastructure lab resources um, and or cloud credits so that we could run this either on the CNCF lab or, or elsewhere. Um, mm -hmm. There is uh, in the CNCF there's a repo that is like a starter template repo. You might notice that there's no README. That's on purpose. Um, they have some templates that cover all of the you know guide for new con contributors and just what what a boilerplate. CNCF project should look like. 
um, that we can start from, and then a couple of miscellaneous writers ta writing tasks. And, and that's as far as I got before I said, I don't want to go too far or it'll be like, hey, everybody, here's a project plan. Thanks for showing up for your work. Uh, so I thought like that would be kind of a representative sample of like, like that's me for 10 minutes, right? Um, <laughs> um, you know, maybe, so, so what, what do you all think? Like, does it seem like it would be useful to maybe, you know, I don't know, spend five minutes or, or something um, or, or 10 minutes in the, in the meeting notes doc and just no bad answers. We can always prune later, but just, you know, quickly generate like a, a good set or do you want to rather spend the time going into these because this is enough for now um what do you think boris and michael a little unsure what exactly we can do today uh -huh. given that we're only four and part of that is probably because our west Coast colleagues were not able to join in. And I believe there is some, I think Lolita also pointed it out, there is some interest there as well. And I can perfectly imagine that there are a number of folks on, you know, Bay Area and so on that that potentially really would like to to join, but you know, it's too early for them. And you know, I, I think that list is great, covers everything in detail. Um, but the question is really if we now start handing out tasks and you know the next time i don't, don't want to say and... anything again um again the goal is just to kind of like have the the raw materials to kind of form right. an initial plan that is pragmatic and, and believable like right. something that people can can attach to and join not to dole out tasks and make decisions hmm. just to yeah i i wonder what we can what we can do, and maybe we want to spend a few minutes on that. Uh, at least initially, the, the idea was um, that we take the our um, white paper uh, that essentially has the personas and the use cases and pick two or three um, of them to say, okay, this is what we really want to demonstrate. And that also then allows us to address certain of those uh, issues. So for example, if you ask me, what is the workload definition? Um, it probably depends on what kind of use case I, I want to realize, right? And it's it's probably, if we pick one more like brownfield or whatever, where you have an existing, like something that you cannot change and you want to use it in, in communities and you ask yourself, what can you do? And then you have another case kind of like Greenfield where you can, you know, instrument with the latest and greatest and show best practices, what you can do that a lot, like if, if we only focus on these shiny new things, people would probably go like, well, that's awesome, but you know, that's not the reality. That's not where I am, right? And my, Absolutely. the only thing my application does is locks, right? <laughs> okay. Show me something with that. And maybe there are things in addition to that, that I can, you know, use to enrich it with a proxy or a sidecar or whatever. But having, you know, those two kind of, um, it's not really use cases, but these kind of scenarios where you have one existing brownfield, but whatever, when I call that, that people can relate to and kind of like picks up people where they are currently and then the second one where we more or less show, you know, oh, this, this cool future with, traces and maybe even profiling and this and that everything uh, which obviously requires that the, the workload that we have is fully instrumented and uses all the latest libraries and, and whatnot um but yeah that that is I, I don't know boris if you're familiar with the the white paper that um we put together and, and have essentially out there for quite a while now and the basic idea was essentially to um have the, the demos kind of like aligned with or kind of like making showing these these use cases that we there theoretically describe in, in some practical hands-on fashion. That was essentially the I didn't of the... have a chance to see this uh, uh, doc, but it would be nice if you point me where I can grab here. But yes, it's a definitely it makes sense to, mm -hmm. to practical uh, uh, approach and show uh, the cases that you consider could be used for this. Um, Work. Yes, so, the white paper. Yes, before we move on, I'm, I'm taking some notes in the in the HackMD file. Um, uh, does it make sense to kind of split it into three? Actually, so you know, we can have a brown field where it's like you know everything is sort of legacy, cloud native, nothing, 
right? Sort of a, a hybrid scenario where, you know, many customers are the majority, I would think, where they, they have existing either data centers or private clouds, um, you know, and they've made some forays and they're actually running both. Um, and then you know, I think that makes feel like a thought experiment, but you're right. That's not the reality for most. I think the, I think the hybrid one is a good one because I know that's definitely where we are at Workday is where <laughs> most things are still on data center and it's right. kind of like cloud has been tiptoed for the last few years, but it's meant to get bigger now. So, right. yeah. And in that context, we can also on a high level, maybe we can already do that today, define essentially the environment, right? Because if you, um, like you always have some kind of prerequisites like no, not for the stuff that we deploy ourselves there, we have full control, but if we um, want to have something that people can take and deploy in their own environment, then we need to say like, okay, what's the prerequisite, right? What do we expect there? And that's something like, you know, if on the one hand you could say, well, uh, I expect you to run OpenShift 4.1, whatever, right? That's the one extreme, right? The other one is like, well, any kind of Kubernetes one point. 22 or whatever does right so we don't really care about what is below that it really just you know needs to be that Kubernetes version and above uh, and that's fine right um which obviously the the less we assume which is available under the hood the, the better it is because the more flexible it is in terms of deployment but also it's harder because we can't make any uh, assumption, you know, this this kind of load balancer is there, or this kind of storage is there, or whatever. Um, so I guess we need to find a, some some middle ground there as well. Or, or we or we declare that um, out of scope for now and say, okay, we focus entirely on our deployment, like the, the the thing that people would see when they go to the demo site or dev site, and, you know, see that in in action, uh, the the hosted version, if you wish. So either way, I think we that that's the kind of like high level things that I think we need to kind of like agree upon, and then we can really break it down into concrete things. The stuff that you had there, Matt, in the beginning. The, the yeah, number, number, I agree. Uh, in number 18, um, the draft issue number 18, which doesn't have any detail other than the one liner there, I think that is kind of, at least in my head, a placeholder for what, what, what you're saying. Like, um, you know, really, you know, perhaps that could be something somewhat prescriptive that says, like, you know, here's how, here, here's the core requirements. You know, like what, you know, how, how how do we specify what the applicable range of Kubernetes versions, as you said, uh, is for this, or, or how do we, you know, how do we for a given workload that will be able to be observed in this kind of consistent way, right? So we can have a many to many, right? Many many observability projects can all observe the same set of workloads that are generally you know, able to be accessed and dealt with and deployed at least with the same kind of wrappers, right? So we're not, you know, so, so are you saying prioritize that? I mean, I, 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 I do agree there for sure, right? Because, because again, that, that enables other people asynchronously and in parallel to kind of, you know, plug their stuff in, right? What, so, so getting that core, you know, how do you do this? Uh, you know, because most of the people that have said yes, we'd like to contribute have existing tools and workloads that they're using, and and so um, do you want to? I'm trying to summarize what, what you said, so I've I've got it captured in the notes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we definitely want to be prescriptive about that, just to be able to narrow the scope of what we're trying to achieve in the working group. Otherwise, we're going to spend most of our time making it work on everything rather than actually delivering exactly. end result. Um, but I would also say that, um, to your point earlier, Michael, that's I, likely not something we can really decide now, but we can certainly raise it for discussion in the community to get an answer with a wider group of folks than just the four of us. Um, so what do we see as the next step? Like that's a discussion that has to happen in community. So should we take a look at the white paper and see what kind of potential use cases we think would be good ones to tackle? I guess so, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, um, yeah well, so, so I think there's two buckets actually, and and I, I kind of was thinking about this over the weekend, like where, where should we actually start, right? Because I've already, even when I put in these draft issues, this is more capacity than we have. And 
you know, but it is it is painting at least capturing the breadth of what people said they might want to do. It, it occurred to me that in addition to like representative workloads, you know, there's there's probably some some things that we could agree on that would make sense to start building up, um, you know, a library of how how does it perform? I, mean, I don't say benchmarks because that implies a formality that I don't think we're propo I'm proposing here, but things like the open telemetry collector or Prometheus itself or uh, Fluenty or Fluentbit or, you know, um, just core pieces of mature, stable, graduated or incubating projects that are broadly used, right? Um, you know, we, we could say that those are workloads too and things that would be observed. So that it, it is sort of a second bucket though because it gets into, you know, let's, let's show core pieces of, you know, broadly accepted open source tooling in the CNCF in action. That's a different thing and for a different audience, you know, as Michael was saying, than like a generic workload of like my microservices with some lambdas or, you know, my database running now as a persistent workload. So, so just to make sure I'm understanding, you're saying like we've got the one bucket of the like observing like a customer application kind of situation and then another bucket of observing the observability stack kind of situation. Yeah, because, you know, the, 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 you know to observe Kubernetes, it, it's a little meta, right? Because Kubernetes, like, you know, it's, it's the workload and itself is a workload in the, same way, in the same way. But but I think that there's kind of two audiences that I could see coming to observe k right? One, people that want to understand like, how you know what's available and how do I observe my own workloads that my team's made, right? But then there's another audience that's probably a, a larger slice of the existing demographic until we grow the pie here uh, and grow the community that is really observability vendors and or observability project maintainers, right? Who, who might want to go and see like, yeah. you know, have I regressed <laughs> against like, you, you know, like, you know, for the performance of like, you know, shoveling this much logs, you know, on this kind of hardware versus that. I, I think that, that as I've been like reading what folks have been doing in the market, um, there's some seismic tectonic shifts that are happening. For example, um, LSM trees used in many key value stores and, and in many of the underpinnings of the stuff that we use in, in, in the observability space, right? They, they oftentimes can't feed NVMe and SSDs fast enough, like the data structure LSM trees. So like VMware, for example, has uh, has an open paper on Splinter DB, which proposes like a new kind of, a new variant of, 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 of they call it B epsilon trees, you know, new variant of B trees, like they can, that, that are optimized for shoveling data faster because the disks are no longer the bottleneck, it, right, as they, as they once were. So, you know, how many things are about to realize that fundamental design pre assumptions that, you know, disks are slow and must optimize for sequential reads and writes. Like increasingly that isn't always going to be the case or or things running on an ARM SOC have a different profile and a different different characteristics than running on x86, right? So as, it's just like across all of the domains, we're about to see a real shift. So maybe like uh, having that focus for a second track on, on the people that are in that world, starting with the things that everyone kind of knows and understands as a baseline, then maybe that's like a, a slightly different, deeper kind of look for that deeper audience. But we very much need to attract those people and give them a reason to come as well, right? Because they're the domain experts that can actually. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely think that's a, a key piece. Uh, sorry, Boris, you were going to say. Um, uh, thank you. And so, uh, if I may just add, on line eighteens, uh, hosting environment it should be hosting environment neutral. For example, I'm on AWS, somebody on Azure, somebody is doing a bare metal Kubernetes. They are slightly different animals. We have to pick up some standard pieces that would be applicable for any platform. So, because it can be a little bit more specific on Amazon and you start to do something uh, that would grab some Amazon metrics, which is completely not applicable for people who are on different platforms. So number one, cloud neutral or uh, hosting neutral uh, case. Second is a, by the way, great document. I just went through this one. Second, as I understand, Michael already put some uh, uh, examples of metrics that uh, he is using. I see a PromQL to get this data. There is a, we have to define set of core metrics that from your consideration 
everyone must to see. I mean, so you can extend, you have uh, at least uh, 200 different metrics, but this is must to be, it's a core metric set and extended metric set. You have to define what people have to go and see on uh, Kubernetes environment up to. Uh, same situation with logs. Um, it doesn't matter, it's a trillion B, trillion the D, or any other open source that get data. What logs, uh, technically, when you do setup, you grab all logs available, but you can specifically put filter or you can say that logs that on any platform you have to monitor on Kubernetes. Uh, it's number one. This is most important uh, logs that you have to monitor. And if we're lucky enough, also to identify patterns that people have to monitor at first. And lastly, from my experience, another subject that uh, I cannot find here, uh, this is a uh, capacity. Uh, it's, it's funny, but uh, this become also a hot topic for Kubernetes, and just because people use a requested and limited numbers, and they're not always in compliance with real uh, um, the real uh, utilization of Kubernetes, it's a very important topic to know because people by mistake can allocate a lot of requested resources and they just uh, would impart the budget and at the same time people do not try to go through this special discipline that's called capacity monitoring. So it's uh, what you allocate versus what you in, in reality are using. So this is the topics that can be uh, also here but again it's a neutral number one i mean so it, our environment shouldn't be a matter here it should be applicable through any cloud even bare, bare metal even the beam uh, ks on uh, vmware it's crazy second uh, as a standard you have to decide what is a core set of metrics what is a core uh, set of logs that must be monitored and later it to put additional subjects such as a capacity uh, uh, review for every uh, uh, Kubernetes, especially keeping in mind they have special auto scale technically for every uh, cloud right now. It's become a big if. Is, is there any chance you could put some of that into the notes? I'm trying to. Yeah, I think you're making all good points. Um, I'm having oh. trouble capturing them into into. In, so, into notes in real time, though. Um, so, there is a, another approach that we could take um, to kind of like, you know, ha having something to show off relatively soon um, without worrying about workloads and, and whatnot. If you think about if we go ahead and, uh, you know, where everything is under our control, we just say, okay, we set up communities on that provider, whatever, and purely focus on the platform um, observability part, right? So the the outcome would essentially be something like the Prometheus uh, project has specifically for Prometheus. Now imagine you have that for quote unquote, all signal types, right? So you could essentially say, um, we set up a Kubernetes cluster where you get all your metrics, your system, your, without any you know, workloads, just whatever the system metrics are, right? Um, you have a, a Prometheus endpoint, you have, um, I don't know, Jaeger, where we pump in the, the API server uh, traces, which are in alpha or better currently. Um, we pick something for logs, uh, make that, you know, pick fluent bit and whatever to, to mm -hmm. uh, have a central place for logs and have a central place um, potentially for for uh, the rest, like uh, we set up Pixie or whatever, um, and really just have something very, very quickly up and running, which, yeah, it doesn't have any workloads or whatever, but it addresses what Boris also mentioned earlier on this kind of like, you know, the, the infrastructure platform level. Um, and, and I think Matt, you also pointed out that currently the majority of, of interested people might be more in this, you know, infrastructure space or, or you know, the platform um, provider rather than the, the the people who have the workloads. And that's something very achievable, right? Like, I mean, that's literally just setting up yeah. um, communities. Uh, the rest is 
you know, we need to make one, I think, one decision in terms of how, how do we do the log aggregation. Um, and, you know, that's something that one person or two people can deliver in, in two or three weeks. And then we would have something end to end. We could look at how, you know, how does that play together with our domain? What would be the, even if it's just, you know, three or four links, right? One link to the Prometheus UI, one link to wherever the logs are, one link to Jaeger, and one link to Pixie, for example, just throwing out stuff there not not biased um and that's it right it's it's not uh beautiful right it's not very nicely designed but it immediately gives and then you know you can draw like what did we do well yeah we deployed you know this helm chart here and we deployed that uh helm chart there to to set up the logs uh, aggregation and and he, here are you know these five commands that you can have and that would essentially give people like people can take that and try it out themselves. People can go to our uh, place and, and you know have a look at that, and it would give us this end-to-end -end kind of like feeling for you know what is what is there as, as a baseline. What can we can we do with and you know figure out what about deployments and you know all, all the rest that we probably need mm -hmm. around that. Yeah, I I really like that approach. Uh, as you said, it's it's the easiest win in terms of implementation time <laughs> and. <laughs> It's yeah, so I just the main market, and it also gives us the foundation for that workload piece to build on. Exactly, exactly, and and we don't need to worry about workloads and so on. We have enough signals from from Kubernetes itself, right? It's not a lack of signals. All of those components spit out logs. I mean, you could just so deploy the the Prometheus, um, uh, the 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 core the the core OS. I, I think it has a brand new name. Um, but the car, the car as Prometheus um, operator, uh, you know, would, would set up an initial set of all that stuff with, you know, stats from um, node exporter and, 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 and all the rest of state metrics, uh, V2 and all that. Um, I made yeah, number 24. I'm sure, I'm sure there'd be some of those details right in there. Yeah, I'm sure there'd be plenty of uh, telemetry data just from having a Kubernetes cluster running that you'd at least see stuff and it would be meaningful and gives us the base infrastructure for everything going forward. Uh, can I ask a question? Uh, I know some Michael using Prometheus and uh, I'm using Prometheus and it seems natural for me and many people just, many companies uh, consider this as a choice. Amazon, for example, recently considers this as a choice to monitor their own IKEAs. So we're going to, uh, uh, to, 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 to move with, with uh, this solution, we're going to use uh, Prometheus as example to collect data. I'm asking this because uh, technically, technically it's uh, possible to go to Kubernetes API and use Lambda and get this data, but it's, uh, and many companies use this approach, but it's not natural for me. Natural way to do this by using Prometheus that uh, scrape of the civilizers address it. So how you in your in your document you're going to suggest so use open source of course and use Prometheus probably as a native tool to scrape data right. for KS, right? Right. For the stuff that we deliver, we need to be very opinionated, obviously, because, you know, limited time and everything, we, we can't probably afford to implement 13 yeah, different yeah, things. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And yeah. Well, I mean, ideally, it's a, I, I think we discussed it already once. Does it have to be a CNCF project or not? I think we said if there is a CNCF project, we, we, we can use a CNCF project sure. that's absolutely yeah. preferred. But, you know, uh, it, it, it doesn't exclude non-CNCF no, 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 open not. source. But, you can... right, right. but to, be, to, to be clear on the Prometheus case, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's fine for us. And I think it would be kind of crazy for us not to include that in the first bit. I mean, um, you know, Borg and Borgmon were like the first, the first two projects in the CNCF at all, right? And so pretty much all of the CNCF projects or, you know, Many, 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 many existing things that expose Prometheus endpoints, right? And that is the de facto standard, at least for the collection in cluster. Um, you know, with remote write as well as OTLP, you know, it's a whole new world that's opened up in the last year or so of all kinds of options. But really, you know, I think Prometheus is really at, at the heart of, of all of those. Um, so, so probably, is what you're saying, Boris, that there's something instead of Prometheus uh, that you would want you would want to add or or um i'm trying to understand 
uh, uh, where you're, or, or are you saying more like, you know, for example, the Grafana agent, uh, you know, which is the, the hotel collector really, you know, can, can also move a lot of things and, and no, I'm sorry, not the hotel collector. Uh, the Grafana agent, I believe, is like a it's like a gutted Prometheus that doesn't have a light word, you know, quite I mean, the right ahead log as well as, as as some of the other that doesn't doesn't exist anymore. That has been merged into Prometheus. It's not. Prometheus oh, did they get rid of it? Okay, um, then I'm out of date. Yeah, yeah, it's Prometheus. I I, I'm brainstorming. Yeah, yeah. Like I wasn't sure Boris what you were proposing. No, uh, the point is. Um, you cannot say people, so they cannot use their own way to get this data, but uh, you can point, so you have some set of data that considered to be choice, mostly choice of the community to, to gather data from chaos as a Prometheus uh, to collect metrics from Kubernetes. I mean, so I, of course I can use my own custom solution, I can use data doc, I can use whatever, but we're going to uh, set up metric set based on Prometheus, um, ability Prometheus to deliver these metrics. Well, right. I think I think specifically Prometheus for sort of like the the thing that scrapes the endpoints and you know can can serve some queries, but yes. but then you know um, we can have you know one to many there, right? Like with remote right and or OTLP, you know there, there, there's a variety of different ways to kind of pipe all that to various backends like Cortex or PromScale or right you know, and, and, and vendor we'll provided do, stuff for AMP. What, or, what we do yeah. is an initial thing can be very bare bones in terms of just yeah. having Prometheus and everything going there. Yep. We can get fancier, <clears throat> excuse me, down the road and having like an hotel collector pipeline in between and things like that. But just as a bare bones get us going, um, I think yeah. we're probably good with just a bare Prometheus doing so, all the work. So same question about logs. What do you think about log collection? So I mean, we have hundreds of different ways to do this. I have my own preferences, but what do you consider we can suggest as a standard or at least where we're going to start? Prunes, prune B, prune Z, or from tail? There. I'm curious if I put a note yeah. in that thing. What do you think of this? Because it kind of is something that kind of works out of the box and leaves the door open. Blue D works out of the box. Blue D to work out of the box. That leaves some choice. It's uh, the Bonzo Cloud logging operator. If you scroll down, there's a cool picture. There's actually two cool pictures, one after the other. So what this is is it's a set of CRDs. Uh, I've used this in production at Everquote for a while, uh, and it was it was kind of nice because it, if you scroll down a little bit, um, good. To the next picture, here, this one. Um, it defines a set of CRDs that define logging flows. So you can kind of work, well, you can annotate a workload and say, hey, I want the logs wherever they're going to also go to Loki or to Elasticsearch or to oh, right. S3 right. or whatever. And it basically, it configures Fluent D and or Fluent Bit uh, configurations in response to those CRDs. So it gives you this sort of self-service composable way that doesn't choose kings, but lets people annotate workloads. And, and what we found really nice about this is you can say like, Everything on the cluster goes to S3 or to, to Loki or whatever, or, or goes to Elasticsearch if it's in this namespace at cluster level. But then, you know, individual app teams or, or people that are actually running their own stuff can then layer in their additional annotations and say, well, wherever it's going for the cluster, that's great. But I know I need these to go here so that they can be put into Snowflake or into. So, something else. Well, what I mentioned, it's exactly it. so a choice of uh, destination is up to everyone. But when you're going to choose uh, your workhorse, such as the Prune Beat, for example, you will be capable to create um, some document that would uh, specifically, you can build up configuration that would be based to uh, get some specific logs on Kubernetes that you consider as a core log that must be monitored. So you would provide this as a part of document. So this is a Prune D. For Fluent Beat, this is a, a configuration file that specifically pick up logs that we consider must to be monitored for KS infrastructure in this case. And after this, guys, we will suggest to monitor this in these events. And after this, it's up to you. You want to go to Loki, fine. You go to Elasticsearch, fine. Splunk, go ahead. Um, I think I get what you're saying in terms of, <clears throat> excuse me, wanting to 
have definitions of what what things should be logged, what metrics should we capture, what are the key uh, pieces that we need to monitor in Kubernetes and other places. Um, I think that would probably come further down the road right right now. I think we're just creating like a vacuum process of sucking everything into uh, Prometheus or whatever for and for logs and metrics to give us that, okay, here's everything in Kube. Um, I, we'd probably get to a point of saying, okay, of these 10 things that come from Kube, these five are like really key, uh, but that's probably a follow on step than getting this initial piece in place. Sure, sure, sure. Absolutely. If I'm understanding what you're getting at. No, 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 yeah, 100%, but people okay. come back to you and they will start to grab full data and later they simply don't know where they have to pay attention, what is critical, what is not yeah. critical, what right. is good for predictions, what is good for operational monitoring, etc. Et yeah. Should we monitor P uh, PVC utilization or who cares? And one in one day you, <laughs> your cluster is crashed. So, uh, so yes, we have to. So should we monitor this one? Yes, we have to. Should we compare requested versus uh, limit? versus utilization yes we have to so some sounds like this one for people who just uh, just uh, jump in and you have some basic recommendation but yes after it's the next step yeah I, i'm wondering if it's beneficial if you like create some issues in the repo for some of these items so we don't forget them um as like future areas of investigation and decision we have to make um that That's working on your white paper. This is the last, uh, uh, probably almost last, it's called implementing SLA and SLO. So this is what all about. Yes, this is your uh, major indicators and major object that you have to versus compare. This is what you consider is very important. Okay. You have yep. thousand methods, but this is what you want to be aware of. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so. So definitely, um, I think you know, what, Ken said, what Ken says resonates. Uh, GitHub issues for sure uh, for any kind of concrete suggestions, even if they're things for the future, um, we can capture them so we don't forget later. Uh, as we're zoom, zooming in on just like the last couple of minutes here, um, do we want to just uh, want to pick some next steps? I think, uh, Michael, you were suggesting kind of just getting something rolling on a cluster. Um, I'm we can we can reach out to the infrastructure lab. I don't know how long their process is to actually stand things up. Uh, are you ponying up some perhaps EKS cluster time uh, or, or a demo environment that we can at least just start prototyping on? Or do we want to do this like kind cluster on a laptop or K3D first and just keep it super neutral and then we don't actually need a front facing one? Or are you suggesting more getting I I think, I think we can probably focus on like the local kind approach first. Um, and then that might give us some leeway for the CNCF to sort out the hosting situation uh, for the infrastructure. Right. Right. And if we, I think that the only real decision we need to make, at least in my mind that, that is open is um, where do we store the logs and make them make them uh, you know searchable um, because the rest is is I mean if we uh, ignore traces and profiles for for now just really focusing on metrics and, and logs right mm -hmm. Prometheus all sorted fluent bit the, the uh, logging operator they are great um, and then I don't know we, we we don't have anything in in CNCF as far as I know right we don't have any any kind of log aggregator uh, there. So low key would be something uh, that's you know uh, also oh, nice. Is, is, isn't low key in the sandbox at the CNCF, or am I wrong on that? No, no, I just Cortex. The... Um, I oh, don't okay. believe low key and Tempo are there. Yeah. Uh, you know, but but again, what I like about the logging operator is one, it's extensible to anything, and it supports a lot yeah. of things on the box. I, that you, Matt, I know the the thing is, if we put something concrete together, it's it, that doesn't help us, right? We need to we need to send the the fluent bit logs to some destination to make it actually curable, right? So we need to decide on something, right? For this first iteration, where we need to actually deploy something, where do you want to send the logs to? 
if CNCF oh. doesn't have anything today, I'd say it's reasonable to use Loki. Uh, and that's what I mean. Like, I'm, I'm not biased. That's why I'm saying I'm happy yeah. with whatever. But we can. It, it's can an open source project. There are, so. there are exactly. things that we could we could use in the CNCF um, as uh, well, depending on how you're de determining that. Like, for example, you know, we could run um, uh, an, an elastic instance. I like the idea of Loki because I'm familiar with it and it works quite well from small to large. Um, and there's no reason, I mean, a lot of people are using it and there's no reason we have to do just one. So for, on the logging side, I would, I would suggest the logging operator with maybe Loki and maybe Elastic or, or something else that, um, something it's else that uh, anyone can, anyone else can use freely. Right. Gray log is another one. Um, we could run min.io to, to provide like an S3 that doesn't require an actual S3. <laughs> bucket behind it, but as GCS and S3 both effectively share the same REST API, like if you've ever used the, the Google Cloud Storage command line utility, like it, it is S3 effectively, right? So so that might be something with a, do, do, do people know min.io? You know I think is? I've heard of it. Yeah, uh, and, um, so min.io is an open source uh, S3 compliant API, and they have like higher tiers that let you do like a cloud back service, but it's it's like something you can run in lieu of S3 that is protocol com the same. So I, I found it useful in CI and things like that. Um, it's quite established. Okay. So that would be another thing that we, we might do on the logging side. But again, I don't think we have to decide here today. I think um, we can prioritize that and then we can have the discussion I think in the various issues. Yeah. So that, <clears throat> that makes sense. Us, but... I, I think one other key thing we need to talk about is uh do i need to create another doodle poll for like more appropriate times that support pt yes. and yeah we need to make sure that that before food. next week yeah, yeah i've got that up on line 23 so um okay uh, do you want to do you want to do you want to do that ken since you're yeah i can do that yeah i, I would suggest actually that we meet weekly for the first you know month or two month but or we so. alternate every other week in a time that's good for europe and like 9 a.m. is probably never going to be good for Pacific, but like if we if we were to find somewhere like in the, even if we just arbitrarily pick like from like 11 a.m. Eastern to like 2 Eastern or something like that, then that, that like at least lets people on the West Coast get up for an 8 o'clock meeting and people in Europe 5 or 5, five 4 or 5 o'clock meeting, right? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll definitely try and... Um... Focus on the let like how many people responded of, across the multiple time zone. Sorry, how many people responded to the doodle? Out of curiosity, uh, I think it was five. Okay, well then, yeah. So we can. So it's not like we have a big sample set anyway. So no. we could just pick some arbitrary times that attempt and and. Yeah, no, I'll probably provide less times than I did last time to like narrow it down a bit. Um, and focus on times that support all three time zones. But yeah, I can totally do that. Okay, we're also, I don't know if you saw we're on the CNCF calendar. Um, oh, we are? We are, yeah. I'm putting in action, uh, I'm putting in the Talkify link I just dropped in on uh, line 25. So that is a link to the actual CNCF calendar. As of yesterday, uh, I had made that issue and, and they got it put on there. So. We have okay. an actual CNCF entry that runs for the next seven weeks. Um, so we'll just need to update that when we have a new time. Yeah, exactly. But it's not hard. Uh, I don't believe. And now that it's a real thing, um, since it's like invited by CNCF Tag Observability, I think I might be able to just change it directly in Zoom as needed. But we'll sort of, my point is we now know how to get uh, things on there. There's a CNCF service desk item okay. for it. Cool. Uh, we're almost out of time. Is there anything else anyone has? Oh, when do you plan to schedule next meeting? Next uh, week? So I'll be sending out a doodle uh, later today for times that we can use going forward. Um, and then by the end of this week, I will hope to have that finalized so that we can then adjust the time for starting for next week. Okay. Awesome. Well, that was a good kickoff. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. very much for joining us today, everyone. Really appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one.
Thanks, yeah, thanks. See you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.